All right, so it's busy at the grocery store, so I figured I'll, I'll just let the crowds dissipate a little bit. And I do an impromptu talk about scrying the aethers. So the first things I showed you in the 100 level series is taking a look at the how to work with various parts of the system. So I initially said, yeah, go ahead and do the aethers. And then I got into the Watchtower Angels and I got into the Heptarchy. Probably the Heptarchy is the, is the simplest one to work with. And the aethers are probably, depending on how complicated you get, um, they're definitely relatively easy to get into, but you do want to be building up your furniture as you go along. And if you get any of the books that I've recommended so far, Mastering the Mystical Heptarchy, Mastering the Great Table, those are a couple of Scott Stenwick books, as well as the Aaron Leach books, the Essential Enochian Grimoire, the Angelical Language, Volumes 1 and 2, stuff like that. You're not going to have... Uh, you're g there are instructions, I should say, for how to make all of those, as well as, of course, Lon Milo Duquette's Enochian Vision Magic, which is excellent. So, okay, so let's say you've you started, and you've scribed the first Aether of Text, and that's great. And I'm just going to assume that as you go along, especially after you've done a couple of Aethers, that you're actually doing the work of building out these tools. Now, one of the things that I can say is, that I've tried to lower the cost of entry, so to speak, to Enochian. So you can probably get a lot farther by downloading my Enochian implements files. And I'm I think I'm probably at like version 18 because I keep on adding certain things, partly based on what the angels show me and partly based on uh, stuff that either I discover or I've read, whatever the case may be. So, the, as usual, I say, if you really want to make sure that you're closely aligned to the actual stuff, the actual transmission that came down to John D. and Edward Kelly, I do recommend go looking at the Fergoff website. It's fergoff.wordpress.com, P-H-E-R-G-O-P-H, P-H-E-R-G-O-F, Hey, sorry, P E R P H E R <laughs> P H E R G O P H dot WordPress dot com. So, okay, so that's your way of like looking into the into what the actual source documents used, etc. You know, I'm doing my best <laughs> to to like have very very closely accurate information and be very. Um, be very be be hyper accurate to the d originals now the angels are very with it they know when you're trying and what kind of effort you're making but they do appreciate the extra effort that you make so why am i telling you all this why am i now suddenly emphasizing the furniture well if you want to work with the heptarchy if you want to work with the Watchtower Angels, and if you want to work with the Aethers, you're going to want to actually build up the the furniture. Now, why do I say this? Well, Jason Louv, uh, L-O-U-V, he wrote this book called John D. and the Empire of Angels. He's clearly one of the main, the, the big experts in the field, and there are a lot of them, you know. I don't claim to be one of them, because who cares, <laughs> right? I mean, either the work either the work looks okay, or you go back and you double check my work and you find errors, right? So that's the main thing, right? Is like you know just looking at the the actual material and double checking, right? And this is something that the angels did too, by the way. They would get they would get the transmission, it would come through more or less okay, but then they would have Edward Kelly make a change, okay? So. So I'm going on and on about this because this is the time if you've if you've done some working with the Watchtower Angels with the Heptarchy in uh, Heptarchical Angels and with the with some of the lower aethers you're going to want to start building up that material. So, uh, it's just how it is. So the the bridge to doing that is to look at is to print out stuff and get paper versions of everything. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. 
as you start, okay? And as you even get to the intermediate levels, that'll take you pretty far. But at some point, the angels might be saying, if you, you know, if depending on how two-way or how, how good you are at, at having a signal t from them, they're going to start saying, okay, time for you now to actually start making this stuff. So, but I do recommend finding, finding the materials that I have online and you just search DIY Enochian on enochian.today and you will find it. So enochian.today, search that site for DIY. That's it. And you'll find, um, I try to keep all the posts that have that up to date with the latest one. So, okay, you've done, you know, let's, let's say you're doing that. Either you're at the point where you've done a couple of the lower aethers, maybe up through bag, let's say, and then you decide to start getting into maybe the 20th aether, maybe the the... 17th who knows right and you've you've printed out some of the materials and then you've already maybe let's say you've made the sigillum de ameth which is it's relatively cheap to make relatively assuming you have some of the materials like a compass like a like the pythons stuff like that certainly the easiest one to make in terms of strictly speaking overall cost is the round tablet of nalvaj but you probably wouldn't use that as the main thing to make you will want something with a little bit more complexity like the, the like the Sigillum de Ameth. Okay, so I've gone, at, gone on at length, print out stuff if you can, and then replace those printed out materials slowly but surely with the the actual stuff, making it or, or purchasing it. Some people will buy stuff, sell stuff online. I'm not going to speak as to how accurate that is. You're going to have to do your research um, because I don't want to put anybody down. And by the way, there are different versions easy, even from the not from the John D stuff, but even John D stuff, if you look within the diagrams, don't always match what then was later later on corrected by the angels. Because this stuff, when you're trans when you're receiving a transmission, it's not easy. I have received transmissions; they are not easy. Okay, so okay, enough of that. So back to the idea of 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 scrying the aether. So. You've already done all this stuff, you got your tools, and you're slowly replacing them with the real thing instead of just the printouts. So, the Aethers are a slow unveiling, a piece-by-piece -piece unveiling of what reality is. So, that's literally, that's what apocalypse means. It means revealing or unveiling. I've heard that translated both ways, so I'm not going to, like make too big of a deal about it. But when you're worried about triggering the apocalypse, you know, I mean, if you think about like the traditional apocalypse, you know, it's the end times. Well, that's because God is like taking away the veil between earth and heaven, right? And people's true natures are coming out and there's battles, blah, blah, blah. But really taking this from an esoteric point of view and within your own soul and your own heart, you're going to want to unveil those things, okay? And to get at the actual nature of reality. So that's what, in my opinion, going through the process from a bottom-up perspective is for. Now, there are some people who, Aaron Leach is a proponent of this. He's saying, look, if you, the way that they're originally presented is top-down. So it's very much in the Merkaba literature where that's something that you do. You go to the, you go to the very top or the uh, Hecalot is the other name for that kind of, same thing, like palaces versus thrones. Um, you go up to the very top, you you know, sort of are at the throne of God, and then you slowly descend. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's certainly an experience. But in terms of like actually doing the overall purpose of this is going to vary from magician to magician, right? So one of the things that, I mean, that's a real question, right? Are you just going to like, hey, I'm a human being, we're going to go meet God because I've I've sanctified myself, I'm good. Or, I mean, this is a real philo philosophical question. Or are you going to then ask, am I at this point where I'm really understanding everything? Am I at this point where I'm able to like shift my consciousness to not only contain what I have here, but actually appreciate what I'm seeing when I am having that very higher experience. Well, the way logically it makes sense to do that, right, is we all start as children 
and then we grow, right? So we grow and we develop. So the same thing happens with our consciousness, right? At first you were like children and you thought like children and now, it's, I'm not gonna get the verse exactly correct. Don't at me in the comments, but there's a, a line in there in the uh, epistles where you are basically told, hey, now it's time to, to develop. So, so that's why I do actually prefer the bottom-up approach, and I recommend it. I mean, and there, you're going to hear different opinions on this. It's it's not a, it's not just Enochian that's like this. It's everything, right? But I'm telling you my approach, what I did, and why I prefer that approach. Yes, absolutely. You know, you can go top top down, absolutely. And I have no problem with that. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. It's just not something that I did initially. And now that I've done all the Aethers, I probably, I just prefer going to Lil to the highest one. Okay. So, but what's the process like? So you start at the bottom. If you're going to use this approach, which I'm going to recommend and explain now, you start at the bottom, the Aether of Tex, then you go up to the Aether of Rye, then the Aether of Bag, and I think the next one is Zay, something like that but you keep going up one at a time. And this is also, this is from Lon Milo Duquette's approach and from his book, Enochian Vision Magic. And his suggestion is you keep going and then all of a sudden, let's say you hit a little bit of a ceiling, right? And that ceiling is there and what is that like, okay? Basically, either the angels in the Aether tell you you're locking up, you're not going to get a full vision, etc. Or the angels say to you, or the, or something goes wrong, or it's not feeling right. Now you can imagine why is this? You're literally undoing parts of your mind, you know, this whole narrative about who and what you think you are, that is going away piece by piece. It's being stripped away from you until your consciousness is naked before, the, before God, basically. And at a certain point, you know, I mean, nobody, if you imagine what that's like in the real world, you know, it depends on your, you know, whatever it is that might make you ashamed in the real world, whether that's being stripped naked or whatever. If you imagine that happening, then the, that's not a good feeling. And all of a sudden fear kicks in, right? What do the angels always say in the Bible? Be not afraid. It's almost the very first thing that every time an angel speaks, don't be afraid. So if that's happening, you're, gonna, you're not having the good time and you're not going to be able to progress. And what Lon Milo Duquette says is, okay, then stop. Stop and pause is probably a better way to put it. And do the work you need to do at that point. What kind of work? Therapy is one. Could be energy work, yoga. The other thing is get grounded too. <clears throat> get comfortable with yourself in the world, right? Um, so those are my main recommendations is to go take the aethers from bottom up and then to, you know, if you hit that ceiling, then stop and then, you know, get, get yourself, do the therapy, do the work that allows you to get comfortable with stripping away these nonsense narratives that you have about yourself, okay? That's all I can tell you. That's sort of like the main thing. And I'm not going to go into detail about what that is because I don't know you. <laughs> I mean, some of you I know, but probably not well enough to speak to any of this, right? So, okay, you've done that. And you're doing, let's say you don't hit the ceiling or you've hit the ceiling, but you return to the aethers. And that's what you would do, by the way, if you hit the ceiling, go back to the aethers, start, my guess is I would suggest going, you know, from the bottom back up again, start at text again, just getting yourself comfortable, used to the energy. And, you know, or if you really, if you're like way far along, then maybe, you know, start at a middle eighth or something like that, whichever one. And by the way, if you're, if you're also doing journaling and stuff like that, you might be able to trace what the theme is that is it a fear that is being kicked up. So if you're not like me and you're good about journaling, <laughs> review those, right? Review those issues. And by the way, that can be helpful too. If you're either simultaneously doing therapy or as a result of this, you need to do some therapy for you to work on this, you can actually find the issues that you can then bring up and uh, work with them. Okay, so you've done all that and you keep going through the aethers. Now, 
there's one spot and it's kind of a notorious spot and it's known as the Aether of Zax. Some people call that, oh, it's like the worst thing in the world. I'm not gonna say it's without danger, right? I'm not gonna say that it's, it doesn't feel like you're crossing an abyss. In a way it does, in a way. Um, now, what I recommend for this is, when I was going through the Aethers, I spoke with Jason Louv about this, and his recommendation was when I got to this point, or when I was approaching that point, I was in the previous Aether, the Aether of Eek, I-C-H, he said, my recommendation is to keep going, which was interesting, because it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm trying to do all the, you know, uh, it wasn't matching up. But he's like, he, and it was, if you, you know, I was not quite together. <laughs> Shocker, right? But once you get past that Aether of Zax, get to and then past that Aether of Zax and then get to the Aether of Zip, that's when everything sort of comes together and clicks. And you realize, okay, there's, there's something huge going on here, right? So, okay, what to do with this, right? Now, that Aether of Zax, like I say, it was not without issues. And in fact, that night, I had a nightmare, and my wife had three nightmares, <laughs> okay? So, I, what do I recommend as a result of this? Well, if you get all the way up to the Aether of Eek, that's the 11th Aether. And, just making sure this person isn't hitting me. Ironically enough, they're driving a black car. <laughs> black. It's very symbolic at this point, depending on what tradition you're coming from. So, and this is why I say the Aether of Zax is notorious, even talking about it. And then there's another black card right after that. <laughs> so anyway, so what do I recommend? Okay, oh, you know, if you were feeling loopy, you weren't feeling, blah, blah, blah. you know, well, that can happen whether or not you're in the Aether or not. So what do I recommend? So, obviously, that night I scried an aether, bad results, and then I went on. So my impulse after that is, fuck this, I don't want to have this happen again. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going to move on to the next aether. And that was actually a really good idea because A, no more nightmares after that. And B, that's when you have one of the two, like I say, it's one of the two major points, that and then the final aether of Lil. So what I recommend for people who are going through the Aethers at this point is once you are about to do the Aether of Eek, you know, you've, I think the previous one is Loe, L-O-E, you go then from that Aether and then you make a plan. You know, you get as much therapy in as you can, you, you do the yoga, you do all that, and then you're going to plan to scry three Aethers in a row. You're going to do Eek in the morning, you're going to do Zax in, at noon, and then you're going to do Zip. Usually I don't recommend that pace. The pace I usually recommend once, maybe twice a week. But you hit that point, you're probably okay to at least try to do those three. Now, how do you get through the Aether of Zax? Because I didn't, that is, when you get there, the only way I can describe it is you have to concentrate through this uh, energy that is trying to distract you from this angelic vision, okay? You need to ignore all of that. Ignore everything that's trying to distract you. In my case, it's, it's like I just basically got into that meditation space. So practice meditating, practice, and even if let's say you're not very good at meditation, it's almost like you're watching, it's like you're watching a magician who's trying to not, trying to prevent you from seeing what the, the, the trick, right? You're trying, he's trying to keep you from noticing and he's trying to trick you, basically. Now, what is this? It is your mind rebelling. Your mind is rebelling from this idea that it is not this ego, okay? That's what it is. That is all it is. So you're going to have to fundamentally accept that you are not that and that you are opening yourself up to the true nature of who you are and what you are. So that is scary. 
I'm just going to say it, right? I went to Jason with this, right? And thankfully he guided me through it. He shepherded me through that. So I'm always grateful to him for that. Um, okay. So you get through, let's say, you know, you do that, you get through and you're fine. What I got at the end of that, by the way, was the angels gave me a symbol in that vision. And that was sort of my point of focus. And to me, it was a white square to focus on that. Okay. So, okay. So you do that. Let's say you get a symbol or whatever other thing that they give you. I'm not going to, I don't know if that they would do the same thing for you as they did for me, but that's what they told me to focus on. So, and those, you would call on the, uh, on the governors of that, these zodiacal kings and say, please, blah, 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 help me out here. Just as you would with any Aether, by the way. So you call up an Aether, you ask for, you know, you know, if, if you're not having a good vision, by the way, for any Aether, find the Zodiacal King who's associated with that Aether, the, th the three of them, and call on all three of them and ask for help. Or you can always repeat the call to the Aethers. 